Tag TV and Tag Radio be seen and heard by both technology users and technology producers throughout the state of Georgia and around the world. Low cost, big benefits, powerhouse online branded video and audio has arrived. Tag TV, Tag Radio, there's a lot more to know. This edition of Tech Talk is brought to you by Globalspeak.com, new media consultants, corporate video and audio communications, video and audio production and distribution, live and virtual event production. Tag TV and Tag Radio is a service of Globalspeak.com, creatively delivering powerful marketing, video, and audio solutions. Caring for, nourishing, improving, and enhancing the quality of life for your fellow human beings. The word, philanthropy. It was actually coined in ancient Greece. That's right, it was based on a mythological tale how the primitive humans at first had no knowledge, skills, or culture of any kind. Zeus wanted to kill them. Prometheus thought other ideas. They lived in caves. They lived in the dark in constant fear of their lives. But Prometheus gave them empowering, life-enchanting gifts. Fire, symbolizing all knowledge, and blind hope or optimism. From the Greeks it spread to the Romans into Latin translation. Philanthropy became known as humanitas or humanness, a state of well-educated habits stemming from the love of humanity. Across the Middle Ages and the Renaissance it came into the English language. Soon it entered the mainstream of American enlightened thought. Greetings, everyone. It's Friday, October 19, 2012, and this is Tech Talk with Technology Association of Georgia President Tino Mantella. I'm your guest host, Frank Baia. In the Tech Talk focus, corporate philanthropy, a corporation's willingness to support community, national, and global causes, all kinds of nonprofit groups from education and the arts to human services and the environment, with financial support, services, or employee volunteers that donate time and more. Up to the corporate philanthropy focus, Jenny Crenshaw, Executive Director with Jabian. The 2011 Woman of the Year in Technology, Jenny is a generous visionary thought leader who can adapt tools for success from one environment to another, bringing extraordinary value both to her company and to her clients. She's an active leader in the Women in Technology forums, helping women in the Atlanta community build skills while establishing relationships. She was, has worked for years in the WIT Girls Get It program and was invited to author a section of WIT's first ever book, Climb, Leading Women in Technology Share Their Journeys to Success. Philanthropic Contributions and Volunteerism, How Does Today's Corporation Connect to the Nonprofit Sector to Help America Grow and Prosper? Tech Talk turns to JBN for Solutions as we speak with its Executive Director, Jenny Crenshaw. Jenny, welcome to Tech Talk. Thank you, Frank, and thank you, Tag, for having me. Uh, I'm not sure there's hardly anyone in the city of Atlanta or the greater state of Georgia or maybe even throughout the southeast anymore, even beyond, I think, because of some of the new expansion that doesn't already know about Javian. But for those few among our listening audience who aren't familiar with the company, maybe just give us a little overview about what the company does and, and how it operates. Sure, thank you. Uh, as you mentioned, we have recently expanded to Dallas, so we've just opened our second office in Dallas. We are um, about seven years old, so we um, we focus on tackling some of the most complex problems that our companies, our clients face. We do that with an integrated approach, um, and you'll often hear people talk about people, process, and technology, but what's a little different with JBN is we really focus on making sure that we leave the organization better than we found it. So we believe in building deep, long-lasting relationships with our clients and with the individuals within those clients. And we really try to understand what's driving that organization to make these decisions, what's behind the business goals of the organization and the people involved, and make sure that when we're creating solutions, we're creating solutions that they can believe in long-term and that they can implement on their own without us being there. Well, I know some of the deliverables probably in the beginning might have been, I don't know that edgy would be an appropriate word, but certainly innovative. And I think what they've done has become the standard by, by uh, how a lot of organizations and consulting operations are, are judged today. I just can't tell you how much you hear about JBN and how uh, great it is to know that not only are you helping others to be successful, but as you're reaching out from uh, Georgia and going to Dallas now, that you're becoming successful. Um, something that a lot of our members and listeners might not be familiar with is the extent of the philanthropic contributions and volunteerism. 
you know, they provide the venture capital for nonprofits to develop innovative solutions for communities, but the nonprofit sector is an important source of social innovation. And I think one of the things that many people aren't necessarily familiar with is that Javian has an employee-led foundation called Javian Cares. Uh, tell us about that, and, and how is it helping the community with social innovation? Sure. Um, you know, Javian Cares is one of the things that I believe we're most proud of as a company. When we began Javian, we really, a lot of us had been on the road, and we understood the difference between being a part of a community and truly being involved in that community and just living in the community. And we didn't we didn't want to have JBN be an organization that just lived in the Atlanta community. We wanted to have true involvement. And so, you know, to us, defining that being local meant getting involved in what was going on in the community and making a difference there. And so we uh, established JBN Cares, and it is an employee, employee-led organization. Mm-hmm. Um, each, each one of us decide how much we want to contribute, both from a monetary aspect and from a volunteer hours aspect. Mm. Um, We started in 2009. Um, We are a 5013C, and we, you know, we believe in giving to give. We we work in organizations that, you know, from uh, we actually just completed the Winship 5K, so JB and Cares uh, was one of the sponsors for the Winship 5K. We've participated with the Furniture Bank, House Proud, um, over 40 companies here in Atlanta or 40 organizations here in Atlanta have, you know, been helped by JB and Cares and by our employees. So it's something we're truly committed to and we believe in making a difference. Well, and I you know they I guess you know putting your money where your mouth is or putting your energy where your uh, your heart is and and uh, certainly uh when you go beyond what is a, a traditional enterprise activities uh, a lot of people would submit that uh that's where real meaningful change becomes a reality that nonprofit sector that uh, is dealing with uh, societies in many cases, the most daunting public problems, and 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 are working to not just take actions, but to develop solutions. Um, knowing that JVN is all about solutions, how does they? How do you view as a firm this opportunity to contribute? We encourage every person inside of JVN to truly unlock their passion. We believe that the the best, most meaningful, high impact solutions can be found when you've unlocked your passion, and that happens on multiple levels. That Yes, that happens in our personal platforms. I think most people have heard at this point that, you know, we as JVN have personal platforms and things that we're passionate about in the workplace, but we also believe in the same thing in, in our community. So finding those things that you're passionate about, the things that you want to give back to and make a deep difference, those are the same skills that we are applying every day in our jobs. They're the skills that we apply with the people we interact with in building relationships both in our personal lives and our professional lives. And so We believe that by encouraging our employees to be involved in the things that they're passionate about, we can unlock that special magic, if you will, in the way that they do their job, but also give them the ability to learn those leadership skills and develop their networks and and become a thriving member of the Atlanta community. Let's delve into a little bit of, uh, uh, say, economics. I mean, certainly right now, uh, with the economy in, in a, uh, at least a curious state, depending on which economist you speak with and, and who's predicting what direction and how things will look after the presidential elections and all those kind of things. But for a minute, and certainly community issues, they, it, it, we can discuss the, the range, and they do cover from economic development to school reform to health care access to cleaner environments, even to greater mobility, uh, civic engagement, effective governance. I mean, you could go on and on. But if we were to focus on the economic development aspect, which I think uh, we'd all agree is pretty much right on everybody's mind in America today, how does JBNC, the nonprofit sector, connecting to industry to help America grow and compete? You know, I think this is one of the things that's a personal um, favorite topic of mine. And, you know, um, as many people are aware, TAG has been working with STEM education reform in Georgia. And, I personally have been involved in Girls Get IT with WIT for several years, and um, it's it's a personal area of passion for me to to believe and promote the fact that we have to get our workforce, we have to get our students prepared for what's coming. We if if we don't, we're going to find ourselves in a situation where you know we can't fill the jobs. You know, TAG has reports that you know we've we've seen throughout the year 
that if we don't do something to improve the education system and get our students ready with these STEM educations, they're not going to be able to fill those jobs in the coming years. And we don't want to see that happen. So, you know, not only is JBN involved in Girls Get IT, we're involved in the, um, the education reform programs that TAG have going on and the education collaborative going on. It's something where we believe that by helping the Atlanta members, the Georgia members of the community improve that education system, we can better the Atlanta community going forward in our industry. Well, Jenny, we've covered a, a pretty deep in terms of the philanthropic contributions and volunteerism and certainly the approach that you take. Uh, you can hear the passion and, and obviously by some of the information and, and facts you presented, the commitment that JBN has to that. Um, maybe just from a, a, a listener standpoint, a little bit more about the kinds of clients that you actually work with, you know, not the uh, foundations or the uh, the uh, um, uh, altruistic things that you're involved with, but maybe something of uh, sort of an eclectic overview of the of the different kinds of clients that you actually consult. Sure. We consult uh, across the industry. One of the things that we have done as we've established Javian is to make sure that we are bringing in people with various backgrounds and various interests, um, you know, of recent importance, we have been uh, heavily involved in some of the health care reform and some of the health care industry that's going on here in Georgia. Mm -hmm. As well, we work with the financial sector and quite a bit of the retail sector. So, um, And many of us have telco and uh, entertainment background. So we, we, we do span the gamut. Um, we don't like to uh, define ourselves by one industry or another because we believe that the problems that are faced across industries are very similar and that we can take the knowledge that we have in one industry and bring it to another uh, to help them kind of learn from past mistakes, so to speak. It is, uh, from a, an amateur standpoint, looking at it from a generalist uh, perspective, um, we sometimes hear the cliche that it's the same thing, only different, you know, more or less what you're saying, and that is that a lot of the challenges and a lot of the opportunities, even though they're uh, – a radically different vertical sectors kind of remain constant. I mean, I guess you could argue the point that uh, computers really don't know content, you know, and that a lot of the uh, impact of, uh, of uh, digitalization and a lot of impact on mobility and, and some of the ubiquitous computer capabilities, uh, um, some of the wireless uh, uh, peripherals that we have now like iPads and iPhones uh, are making a radical difference in terms of how, you know, you would almost – say that uh, what used to be uh, disruptive technologies, which were kind of the exception, it's kind of a case where almost everything is a disruptive technology. Wouldn't you agree? That is true. Um, you know, it's it's very interesting because there's a balance there between uh, everything being the same and everything being unique. Um, you know, we often talk about each one of our clients is unique and therefore their solution must be unique. And Really, the way we believe we bring the most value to our clients is understanding, understanding the balance between the fact that we're all businesses, we're all trying to make ourselves successful as an organization, and we're all dealing with the same disruptive technologies and the same changes in the economy and the world, but yet each company has a culture. Just like you and I have different goals and different purposes and different passions that drive us, each organization has a different culture. And a solution to be truly beneficial to that organization must be adapted to fit that culture. So we don't believe in a one-size-fits-all, but we do believe in learning from others' mistakes or others' history. Um, it's kind of the same thing that we would teach our children or that we would teach each other. You know, I don't want you to fall down at, or trip over that um, stick because I did. I can share that with you and you can learn from that, but the way you go around that stick will be very different. Sure, and 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 certainly I, I wasn't inferring a you know a one solution type situation applied to everything, but you know when you mentioned the spectrum of the kind of companies you deal with, you went into even entertainment, and arguably you could say that the entertainment industry, while it seems to be, uh, I guess a little bit more informal in terms of say healthcare, you know, and most people perceive it differently, that the realities of digitalization and how um, the uh, disruptive technologies have changed things like music or film or broadcast are not that far different, although they're measurably on the surface different, not that far different than, say, some of the things that are impacting healthcare or fintech or logistics or those kind of things, just simply because of what's uh, imaginable and possible because of uh, 
the technology, and it's got to impact how you approach management strategy and, and employee strategy and on and on. I'd be remiss in not bringing up the fact that uh, JV and, and the JV and partnership, uh, the, uh, the group that uh, started the organization, have been way loyal, way committed, very influential in terms of contribution in both time and energy and, and great thought leadership as far as the technology association is concerned. It's hard for me to think about a committee that uh, doesn't have a JBN representative on it, but I certainly know things like the Georgia Technology Summit and the Excalibur Awards and many of the premier events. Um, if there wasn't a JBN person on the committee, they were in charge of the committee or one thing or another. And so I think we'd be remiss in not saying uh, there's a gratitude that uh, it's maybe a um, uh, as a cliche would say, a two-way street, but uh, uh, I think a lot of the success that you've enjoyed is because of a lot of the uh, giving that you provided, not only in terms of the talent and capability and the uh, philanthropic contributions, but also the pure volunteerism to the general technology industry and through TAG specifically. So, um, well, uh, I, as um, these will often happen, uh, we're quickly running out of time. Um, is there any other point that I can uh, that uh, you might want to bring to our audience's attention before we close? Well, I think that the closing remark would be uh, to your point. You know, we have learned so much by participating in TAG and by being a part of that organization, and we've created great relationships. We've established mentors. Most of our people who are are participating on those communities or those committees are there with have established great mentoring relationships with the people on the committee committees and have learned quite a bit. So, you know, as JB and we're very thankful to have an organization like TAG that we can participate in and we can build those relationships. So thank you for the opportunity today as well. Well, Jenny, again, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us today on Tech Talk.